In the eighth chapter of his letter to the Romans, St. Paul tells them that creation groans for the full revelation of the sons and daughters of God. We can have a new relationship to the created order beginning right now by choosing to live a life of faith. We live our lives now in the Son, Jesus, through whom and for whom everything was created. And in Him and through Him, everything's being recreated. When we embrace our daily work with a mind that is renewed by the Holy Spirit, we can begin to comprehend the loving plan of God. And that includes the Christian view of work. We live in an age which has lost sight of the dignity of work. And that's because we've lost sight of the dignity of the human worker. In the industrial age, men and women were often reduced to mere instruments. In a society that emphasized productivity over the dignity of the human person, the dignity of the worker. The technological age promised to bring something quite different, but it has failed to deliver on that promise. Too often, men and women are still viewed as instruments and objects, rather than as persons and gifts. Beloved Father, through the life, death, and resurrection of your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, we have become your adopted sons and daughters. Through baptism, we are now members of his body, the church. Our Savior Jesus taught us that whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. We thank you. That promise includes each one of us. As members, of the family of Jesus, we turn to you in prayer. In Jesus, we are joined in a communion of love which is stronger than death, along with the saints, the holy ones. They are the great cloud of witnesses the Bible speaks of. They've gone before us marked with the sign of redemption, and they live their lives by faith. They inspire us by their holy life. They also pray for us from their place in your communion of life. And a special place of honor in that communion is St. Joseph. He said yes to your call to be the chaste husband of Mary, the mother of the Lord, the foster father of Jesus, and the guardian of the Redeemer. A man of few words, Joseph spoke with action and calls us to the way of active faith. The patron of all workers also shows us the dignity of all human work when joined to Jesus. Joseph always said yes to your invitations to grace. He always put Mary and Jesus ahead of himself. And he invites us to do the same in our own daily lives. The carpenter who taught the child Jesus to work with wood in the workshop of Nazareth now shows us that all human work participates in the loving plan of redemption. At 33 years old, Jesus, the carpenter's son, freely embraced the wood of the cross and reconciled us to you and to one another for the sake of the world. Joseph loved Jesus, and Jesus loved Joseph, and that love continues. St. Joseph, you who love Jesus with a genuine fatherly love, we now ask you to pray for us as we follow the way of Jesus in our everyday lives. You understand the challenges of raising a family, earning a living, facing the difficulties of life, and always remaining faithful to God. We now turn to you and we ask for your intercession. By your prayers, obtain for us the special graces we need to be faithful to our own specific vocation and to live our lives in service to Jesus as you did. St. Joseph, today, I specifically ask you, and now here, add your own specific intention.
trong màn đêm tôi đau sẽ run lạnh cao miệt mài đôi chân bước trong âm thầm đưa mẹ và chúa lần đi phương xa nắng khó quy tươi vơi vẫn chẳng trong đêm đen lãng quên có ai thuộc tên một đời cần lao với kiếp đơn hàng dán chân lao thiên bàn tay nâng niu áo chúa kính thiên vui trời trong đêm đêm